So we've found this spot. It's actually a spot I knew about. There's this cool old truck over here and we're gonna let the light levels drop because you gotta let the, light, the sky get really dark before the Milky Way really, really pops out and really shines. You need that contrast between the stars and the sky. So we're gonna let it get dark for a little bit. We'll get set up, find some compositions and see if we can find something we like. Off into the creepiness. Looks like the Milky Way is gonna be coming about this way, which is not really ideal for this truck, but I don't think it's bad either. I think I'm just gonna kind of come back here off to the side and hopefully once it gets a little darker, have our Milky Way lead right down into the truck. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get it set up. All right, so we got our setup. Kind of going to go with this composition where the Milky Way is coming down and kind of leading into the truck. So getting focused at night is a challenge. And one of the easiest ways to do it is during the daytime, uh, focus on something at infinity and just physically look down at your lens and see where that's falling. Remember that spot and then when you get out here, you can just quickly turn your focus ring to it, throw your lens into manual focus and you'll know that you'll be focused at infinity. Uh, the other way is to go into live view and then digitally magnify and find one of the brightest stars. Find it and then manually focus on it. And you wanna turn that star into the smallest, finest point that you can. And then you'll be manually focused. Uh, but once you get that focus, look at the top of your lens and remember that spot, then you can quickly just go back to it in the future and kind of check yourself once in a while, especially if you're moving your tripod around. Okay, so now we're in focus. Now the next step is to get our composition. One of the things that I like to do to quickly get my composition is I will crank my ISO all the way up as high as it'll go. I'll do like little six second long exposures. That way I don't have to sit there and wait for a 30 second long exposure. I can just quickly get instant feedback on my composition. I can tweak it like so. And then once I like my composition, then we can go with that. So settings wise, let's talk settings. You're gonna want your aperture to be wide open, as open as it can get to let as much light in as possible. So in this case, we have a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It's a f2.8. I'm gonna be shooting at f2.8. Next thing is your shutter speed. There's something called the 500 rule, which basically means that you take 500 and you divide it by your focal length, and that gives you the number of seconds that you can leave your, the shutter open before you start getting blurry stars. You have to take into consideration the crop factor of your camera if you're shooting on a crop sensor. So, you know, you gotta take that into consideration. We have a 16 millimeter lens that we're shooting with, 500 divided by 16, I can leave my shutter open for roughly 30 seconds. I'm gonna go 25 seconds just to make sure that I get nice sharp stars. Because if we leave the shutter open longer than that, we're gonna start getting blurry blurry stars. We're gonna, it's gonna be streaking across our sky because of the rotation of the earth. Um, if I was to zoom in to 35 millimeters, I would no longer be able to leave my shutter open for quite as long. So that's the 500 rule. That's what dictates how long you can leave your shutter open. I'm going to be shooting f 2.8. I'm going to go to 25 seconds. My ISO is going to be whatever it takes to get the histogram off the left side. So a lot of times I start with ISO 5000 to try to get the left side of that histogram off the edge to make sure that I'm not losing shadow detail. So we'll start at ISO 5000. We'll turn this light off and we'll take a couple test shots and we'll see how that looks. And take this shot, 25 seconds. It's kind of creepy, <laughs> but um, it's one of those things you should do with a friend because you don't want to be out here all by your lonesome. Okay, so here's what that shot looks like. So now if we review our histogram, our histogram is definitely not off the left side here. Um, we're at ISO 5000. Stars are nowhere even close to being blown out, but we have really nice, really nice uh, detail in our Milky Way here. We're also getting a whole lot of red light pollution from the the windmills that are way back behind me. So that's not ideal, but I think with the way we're gonna manage this is that I'm gonna have a frame for my sky, and then because we are getting that light pollution, I'm gonna go ahead and light paint this truck, and I think that will be um, 
that'll be pretty cool because we'll be overpowering that ambient light with a light painting and uh, it'll kind of clean it up. So I'm gonna crank my ISO up to ISO 8000. That'll give us a little bit more detail in our foreground. And then in the next frames, we're gonna bust out the light and do some light painting. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lower my ISO down to ISO 800, and I'm gonna stop down to like F4. The reason I'm doing that is just for a little extra sharpness, a little bit more depth of field in our foreground. And now I'm just going to take the light on my, on my phone and do some light painted frames. I'm also going to be triggering my 5D Mark IV from uh, the Wi-Fi on my phone. So I'm gonna get that set up, and then I'm gonna wander around and do a little bit of light painting. It's kind of standing out to the front, so I'm gonna trigger my camera, and my exposure is going. It's a 30 second long exposure. And I'm just kind of illuminating the truck in the foreground, moving my light around. And the cool part of doing it this way is I'm gonna be able to get instant feedback once my exposure is done, um, because I can see it on my phone. Okay, so that exposure is done. I'll take a look here. Truck's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna try doing it um, from a little further away so I'm not in my frame quite so much. Give this another try. Do you hear that? Sounds like somebody dragging a pipe up the road. That's what it sounds like. It's really, it's getting way closer. <laughs> what is that? So I'm gonna do one more frame here, light painting the truck. And when you're doing the light painting, you wanna do it at an angle. You don't wanna shoot on the same axis as your camera is on, otherwise you're gonna end up with a very flat result. I think we're gonna drive to the next spot, go see if we can find another shot. We'll see what we can find. So we found this other spot here. We've got this lone tree and that's kind of on this road here. And we've got the Milky Way just like arcing above it. What I'm gonna attempt to do here is I'm gonna do a panorama with the tree hopefully fairly centered underneath it and then have that Milky Way, you know, creating that nice arc above it. So the trick to doing a panorama of the Milky Way like this is first of all, it's a very wide shot. So I'm gonna be shooting with my 16 to 35 again and I'm using our L bracket which will allow me to, when I rotate here, it's gonna rotate around the center of the camera. That way it stitches nice. If I was to mount it on the bottom of the camera and then flop my ball head over, that's not gonna work so well. Anytime you're doing a panorama of any kind, you wanna get the base of your tripod level. I have a leveling base here, um, which makes it super easy, but the most important part is to get the, the base of your tripod level. That way, when you're panning, you're not going to be panning on a strange axis. You wanna pan perfectly horizontal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the electronic level on the back of my camera here and get it level in the center of my composition. That way I'm level here and as I pan, in theory, I should stay pretty level to the edges of my panorama. To get my composition, I wanna start right in the middle, right where that arc of the Milky Way is the tallest. And I wanna make sure that I'm not cropping off the top of that Milky Way. I need to make sure I'm panned up enough. And so I'm gonna increase my ISO all the way. We'll try a four second exposure right in the middle of my frame. We'll take that shot just so we can quickly see what it's gonna look like. Looks like I could pan up a little bit more. I'm gonna pan up, bring up my electronic level, make sure that I'm staying level as I pan up. And then we'll take that shot. All right, that looks pretty good. It looks like I'm panned up enough. So I'm going to shoot at ISO 8000 and I'm gonna go 25 seconds, F2.8. Double check my focus, still focus to infinity. Should be good. So we're gonna turn this light off and I'm gonna start all the way over on one side of my panorama and then slowly come over this way. And also when you're doing a shot like this, you want to go well beyond where you want your, fo your photo to start because the edges always get messed up in panoramas. So I'm gonna go well beyond the edge of 
the edge of the Milky Way over here. That way I'm gonna crop it off anyways, but um, that way the Milky Way doesn't get messed up. The area that I don't want does. This is gonna be like a at least 180 degree panorama. It's gonna be a really wide thing. So it's probably gonna take me at least, I don't know, eight shots or 11 shots to get all the way across. So I'm gonna pan over this way, lock down my pan knob, put on two te second timer, shut off my light, and I'm gonna start taking photos. So we shot that panorama and now I've, I've moved over this way and I want to do one more shot where it's just a simple horizontal shot, but I've got the Milky Way kind of arching over the top of the tree. Um, so it's gonna be a pretty simple shot. We're probably just gonna silhouette that against the sky because it's kind of a nice silhouette. And the foreground eh, kind of sucks because we have this road here. So I think it'll be better if it's just a silhouette. So one setting that we've neglected to talk about so far is white balance. Typically I like my white balance to be between like 3800 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin. Also with your tint, make sure that you're adding a little bit of magenta but not too much. You don't want your, your Milky Way to come out purple like you sometimes see online. So ideally you want some kind of cool blue tones in the dark parts of your, of your sky, but you want just a little bit of that kind of warm, a coppery color in the gassy part of the Milky Way like there is in real life. So um, that's kind of what you're striving for is both blue and warm tones present. All right, so here are the shots that we came away with from this shoot. If you wanna learn how to post-process these images, you can go over to nickpagephotography.com. I've got tutorials available over there. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.